Um, first of all, let's, uh, let's talk about your recent conversations with the New South Wales government. What were those conversations about and where did they end up? Well, still waiting to hear back, Pete, but uh, basically we've got a beautiful city. Where if you look what's going on uh, in perhaps New York and in Europe, people are reading out in the streets, uh, tables and chairs are out in, in, in streets, they're closing roads off. New York is working really well where people can dine outside, have a glass of wine outside. Now, our problem is we have so many restrictions on small business, restaurants, cafes, where we know that, we're, you know, the March quarter, from March to June, we're about four billion down in turnover, which through hotels and restaurants and cafes, so it's incredible. So my points to the governments have been that we need to encourage people. I mean, the city is a ghost town at night, especially. Uh, why not turn these streets into to tables and mm. chairs and drinks and get people back into the city to encourage them to get out. Now, all of the, the, the restrictions on small business to put a table and chair outside is just ridiculous. Now, if the government are saying they want jobs, 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 we can create jobs for them if they give us a little bit of flexibility and not go through the red tape and months and months of paper coming back on you know, are we allowed to have a table and chair outside and are we going to be charged for that as well? So what? they're the conversations I've had. So like Europe, you know, like the Italians and the French, you know, it's all, it's all al fresco, it's all outdoor dining and, uh, you know, that way you watch the world go by while exactly. you're having a meal. Exactly right. Glass of rosé sitting outside, how there good would go. that be? There you get, go. get some, you know, you know the, 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 the arts are suffering as well. Tourism, mm. arts, hospitality, hotels. Let's get these people back in there. I've also brought up, and I've been banging on about this for, for the last, I think when we spoke in, mm. in, in April or May, about payroll tax. I mean, we're penalised to employ people. There's also the FBT, uh, fringe benefits tax. Mm. You know, corporate entertaining. Let's get people out and about. More people in restaurants and cafes, that means mm. we employ more people, and that's what the government is saying they want. Well, Help us help you. Yeah, well, I think you've got a friend in, in Dominic Perite uh, when it comes to that. I mean, he's all about trying to take that out. It's, uh, it's, it's getting um, that, that to be supported by the federal government, I suppose. Uh, when it comes to the... Just well, for those... Go, yeah, go ahead, Luke. No, I hope I can have a, share a glass of wine with Dominic yeah. in George Street uh, on a table and chair very soon and we can chat about how we can get this city pumping again. Yeah. Well, just on the... the so it's the council, right? Just explain for our viewers who, who might not be aware. You're not allowed to go out mm. a, and dine outside because of the, the taxes and the charges that they impose, right? I mean, how, how heavy are they? Are they? And, and particularly, you know, you've got a couple of restaurants and, and, that's, and that's great, but for the, for the smaller um, restaurants as well... Uh, who only have themselves to look after, and they've got, basically got no one dining at the moment either. How crippling can yeah. they be? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, different councils, different rates. You know, I, I was passed on to council, then I was passed on to state government. No one's really owning up to who's what, who's taking control of it. Mm. But there are charges per table, per chair, in different uh, suburbs. So, and CBD is obviously a little bit higher as well. So. I think if all those restrictions are brought back and those excess charges, because, you know, dining in restaurants and cafes is down 56%, uh, and I mentioned about $4 billion down as well mm. in, in that May, uh, sorry, March to June quarter. So it's just incredible. We need all the help we can get, and we want to employ people. Now, we obviously want to do this in a safe environment. Wouldn't you think mm. sitting outside uh, in a street, fresh air and all that sort of thing that's a lot more safer as well. I know a lot of businesses in, in Melbourne are not getting a lot of clarity uh, when it comes to, you know, the roadmap forward, how, how you get out of this mess. A lot of restaurants obviously struggling in Melbourne because no-one's allowed to dine out at the moment. Are you at least getting clarity in, in mm. New South Wales? What, what's your view on that? Look, what, I, I really sympathise for my colleagues in, in the hospitality business down there and, and not knowing whether they're going to have 10 or 20 seats allowed to, for people to come yeah. into their restaurants uh, but within the next four, six weeks. It's crazy. I mean, they need time to plan things that, and the government need to give them that roadmap. Here, I think the government's been very good on what we're doing. You know, the square meterage, uh, it, it's good that the numbers are kept under control at the moment. We're, we're lucky in two big restaurants, Glass at the Hilton and Luke's Kitchen here in Waterloo, we've got big spaces so we can spread out people very well and have a very COVID safe yeah. uh, restaurant. But, you know, the message out there is good for New South Wales, but let's 
I hope our, our yeah. industry really pay attention to the rules and just don't ruin things and, and pack people in. Hey, there's a, there's a policy that's taking place, Luke, at the moment in the United Kingdom where the government basically pays half of everyone's meals. Uh, and that is designed to encourage people to get out, uh, you know, and, and go to restaurants and go to pubs and, and have meals again. Is that something that you would support here? Very much. Actually, it was on the table. I had a discussion with Scott Farlow last week about... Um, and, and, and it is something that they, they were considering, and I think it's a good thing. Any sort of initiative to get people into restaurants and help the restaurant industry, mm. hospitality business, w would be really welcome. And also, I believe, and a lot of my friends that I've spoken to over in the US, a lot more people are trying to, to choose to dine outside as well because, you know, there's, mm. there's less of a risk of, of coronavirus passing because you're out in the open. So is that something that, that you might yeah. bring up and encourage your argument? Well, it, it, it is, and, and in fact, I'm going off the New York, what they're doing in New York. A lot of the streets are closed, and tables and chairs, and they're just dining out there. And, you know, I actually, when I had my meeting with Scott Farlow last week, I took him down to George Street, showed him the space outside, you know, just our restaurant there, uh, mm. and what we could encourage for out, outdoor dining. Yeah. And there's the QVB building. There's all those cafes in there that are really struggling, really hurting. You know, I walked around the city uh, last Saturday night at about 8 p.m., and it really is a ghost town. And, you know, I get that people are nervous, but if, if we can encourage some sort of, you know, live music things, get people mm. back out, things could be good. All right. We'll create more jobs. I think you should try and get in on this meeting next week uh, when it takes place, Luke. I think uh, your, your opinions are very valuable. Well, hopefully, send me Dominic's number and yeah. I'll give him a call. Or his people. Or Dominic, give me a call. Yeah, all right.